on this uh, logging area and hopefully this will be the last part of this series for this for the McCoy logging store well, where they store their logs I need to say a logging storage area or
Uh, hello, thank you for watching. I'm working on a, um, a build of Project Zomboid, another game in Minecraft. And I'm working on a, the log storage area in the McCoy uh, Logging Company. I'm basically just placing in the patterns in the um, ground where the sand is in the game. So it's requiring a bit of excavation. But that part is almost done now for the removing of the grass, although I do need to replace the sand in the previous locations that I'm excavating. Uh, thank you for following.
Almost got the excavation done. Not too much longer now. You don't place down sand along the perimeter to show exactly what should be filled. Once that's done, I'll start placing in grass where it should be 
a bit higher than it is normally. Some small areas like this I'll fill in. these certain parts. Shoot. Thought I was done.
Okay, so that's the perimeter for the most part of what should be filled in with sand. There's a lot to fill in, so I may end up filling in the sand off stream. But this will give a good view of how it should look. Next thing to do is to complete some of these. Check and make sure I've got all the logs in right. I've got two to fill in over there and this one to fill in right here. This is mostly to make sure that it's a um, 4x3 pattern for these larger logs, or what's supposed to represent these larger logs.
for the most part, a lot of this area doesn't have a lot of high grass, but some of these areas were do have quite a lot. They tend to be in patches. And in some cases, uh, areas where you don't see a lot of movement, either of trees or of vehicles, such as between this area right here and these porta potties. Not a lot of trees will be put here, or logs will be put here for any period of time, so the grass is a little bit higher here. So the next part is to place in the trees and on the outside and I may end up just doing the spruce trees with the time that I have. Normally I place down um, the spruce trees first and that is simply because it's uh, easier to place down it's easier for the spruce trees to grow in first sometimes when you place them in after they can get hung up on other trees that are placed in and it may cause them to have a harder time to actually generate a tree in It will translate from a sapling to a tree. 
At least that's what I have noticed. So it tends to be a bit easier to place in these trees first and then fill in the areas with other trees such as oak and spruce or basically whatever you're working with. Since I'm not doing a lot of acacia trees or dark oak or jungle trees in this build then that may change and that may be altered depending upon what trees you're working with. Usually the larger trees probably should go in first so if you're working with jungle trees you might want to fill in the jungle trees first or same thing is true with if you're working with dark oak trees. Acacia is a little bit weird too since it the type of tree that the Acacia um, generates is not straight up like the other trees so you may want to consider that and place those in first or maybe second depending. This all depends upon whatever you're trying to work towards. If you place them in, regardless of when you place them, they probably might not have their oh their wood their log blocks that make up them be destroyed or be replaced by something else the um so that might be a good indication to put it in the cake yeah um after you put in all the other trees it should generate in in a way that will fit but that's not a guarantee If there's too much um, obstruction around it, it might not generate in. But as I said, I haven't really worked too much with Acacia when building forests like these. And usually they're really meant for savanna like areas and areas that aren't really concentrated. Such as these areas like this that I'm placing in. And some of the tree line around it can be seen too. They don't have oak trees or um, birch trees in. Uh, let's see here. See, I usually use birch and oak trees to give um, contrast and also to fill in the area. Some areas like this side is, isn't going to have any trees at all. It's a huge open area, open field.
going to help the some of these trees along the ones closer to the fence I've noticed one thing with spruce trees is that even when you put them in an open area sometimes they take a bit longer to grow in or generate in Sometimes it only takes one application of this bone meal. Sometimes it takes quite a few. And that is even with no obstructions. And as I'm working my way, I sh there sh the other trees should be growing in, or should have an easier time growing in, since the fewer saplings, fewer if statements, um, if it should grow, does it have enough light, that sort of things. So there are fewer of these if statements to apply to these saplings, thus it becomes easier to generate in trees per um, per tick. Tick being um, basically every few seconds or every second or so, these saplings are given that question: Can it grow? Does it have enough light? Particularly the I suppose it's programmed in first to find out if it has enough light. And if it has enough light, then it needs to know if it has enough space. And it will displace some types of blocks in. But some types of blocks it will not displace. If you have planks above a tree, it will displace the planks. And I've noticed it will displace wood as well. Logs in particular. I've seen that happen one or two times, mostly on the PC version. I think I've seen it here, but it's a little bit harder to tell since once a tree generates in, you really have to watch it. But it definitely does displace leaf blocks. So whatever tree that you place in afterwards, it will alter how the entire place looks by later trees will displace the tree, the leaf blocks of earlier trees. If that makes sense. So you're going to see more leaves of the later trees than you will of earlier trees. The only way to counter that is to manually place in each block for a tree. If, for example, you were to place a floating stone block, then the tree won't generate in because the stone block will create an interrupt in this if statement and this is one way that you can limit your oak trees to make them easier or more manageable to farm I place in just one block of, um, say for example, stone brick over an oak sapling, then that will 
make a make it generate in trees that for example you could stand on the ground floor and break the blocks on you don't have to climb up the tree as if you might have to do sometimes for oak trees Since oak trees don't just go up, they also branch out to the side as well. Usually this is not a problem for spruce trees or for birch trees. Since both of those trees tend to be within a reasonable um, range in terms of height. It's not too hard to actually farm even the larger of the spruce trees. And birch trees tend to, on average, be fairly small. The only major difference I notice for spruce trees is in placing them out. It's much better to place three empty blocks per between uh, spruce saplings whereas two blocks are fine for birch trees and the same thing is true of oak saplings as well although you could put oak saplings side by side and it really wouldn't matter too terribly much Since you can use oak saplings in such a manner to create tree tunnels if you wanted to. That is if you wanted a tunnel that's more natural instead of, I guess you could say natural for both of them. If you wanted a tree tunnel instead of a um, stone tunnel wood instead of stone then you can easily use oak trees for that although you still may need to sculpt it a bit okay so I'm going to do some of the other things in off off stream, but I'm going to do a flyover of what I've worked on for this uh, second section of the logging company, McCoy Logging Company, and that is the log storage area. These sections right here are going to be filled in with sand, but I think this gives a good indication of what it should look like still. And mostly the only areas that are not really filled in with sand are the, these, this area right here. Between this and this wall right there. Next place I'm probably going to be working on is a whole bunch of factories. And that's off in this direction way over here on the side of the map and I'll fly over there before I end the stream In some areas the road is in, but I haven't placed down the carpet that will represent the pavement.
Yeah, and almost there. I've excavated a large portion of these areas that I, I'm, per I'm positive I'm going to have to work with. But the next next time I, when I, when I stream Project Zomboid, I'm going to be working on factory and storage areas in this this area right here. There's part of one already in, and that is simply because it was difficult to, um, there's a finite distance for the maps on, pri on the PS4, whereas the PC can handle much larger distances, almost infinite distances. So part of this uh, factory right here ended up being trapped on the side. So, that's a little this side right here. So, to fix this part right here, I just decided to create a wall right here. There's not a wall right here in the Project Zomboid, but there's. It was either to create a wall right here or leave this open with this view right here. So, I decided to make this more functional to where it still works as a factory, just a factory on the edge of the map. Yeah, that will be the next time I stream Project Soundboy. Thank you very much for watching and that is it for now.